Before we dive into what fractions are, let's make sure you're up to speed on division. So for example, what's 63 divided by 7? In other words, if I have 63 dots and I divide them into 7 equal groups, how many dots are in each group? And to review, click down here instead. Right, 63 divided by 7 equals 9. Now instead of dividing 63 by 7, what if we try dividing 1 by 7? That might seem a little strange, but let's give it a shot. So we have one dot, and we're dividing it into seven equal groups. Well, in the case of one dot, we're actually dividing it up into seven equal pieces. This slice of the dot over here represents one divided by seven dots. So one divided by seven is not a whole number. It's just a piece, or a fraction. Next, try figuring out which of these fractions represents one divided by four. Is it this slice? this slice, or this slice. Nicely done. So this fraction is 1 divided by 6, this was the correct answer, 1 divided by 4, and this is 1 divided by 3. Next, instead of dividing 1 into 4 equal groups, what if we try dividing 3 into 4 equal groups? How can we do that? Well, here are 3 dots and let's make four equal groups out of them and give them different colors, like this. Notice that these four groups really are all the same size. This red one is made up of three smaller slices, as are the blue group, the yellow group, and the green group. So each of these groups represents three divided by four dots. Another way to think of three divided by four is like this. One divided by four times three. Each of these slices represents 1 divided by 4, which you can also read as a fourth. And there are three of them, so you can read this fraction as 3 fourths. So instead of thinking of this as dividing three dots into four groups, you can think of this as combining three fourths of a dot. Let's try another example. Here's the fraction 4 sixths, meaning you're dividing 4 into 6 equal groups but you can think of it as starting with one-sixth and multiplying it by what number? Don't worry, this is not a trick question. Precisely, four divided by six is the same thing as having four-sixths. So which of these diagrams represents four-sixths? This one on the left, this fraction in the middle, or this one on the right? Right, this one is four-sixths. This fraction is 3 fourths, and this fraction is 5 sixths. Now just like saying that certain numbers are bigger or smaller, you can also say that certain fractions are bigger or smaller. Which of these fractions would you say is the largest? In other words, which represents the biggest chunk of a dot? Right, 5 sixths is the largest. It's larger than 3 fourths, and you can write that down using the greater than symbol. So 5 sixths is greater than 3 fourths, and similarly, 3 fourths is greater than 4 sixths. Now some fractions are the same size. For example, which of these fractions down here equals 4 sixths? Is it 2 thirds, 3 fifths, or 5 eighths? Be careful, all of these fractions are pretty close together, but only one of them is exactly equal to 4 sixths. Exactly, 4 sixths equals 2 thirds. Let's overlay some of these fractions. Putting 4 sixths on top of 5 eighths, you can see that 5 eighths is a little smaller. 3 fifths is also slightly smaller than 4 sixths. Meanwhile, 2 thirds and 4 sixths are exactly equal to each other. So this fraction up here is also equal to 2 thirds. And here's another way to see that. Let's just erase some of these dividing lines, here, here, and here. And sure enough, this green region represents 2 thirds of the dot. So 2 thirds really equals 4 sixths. Now the number above the division line in a fraction is called the numerator. So for these fractions, 2 and 4 are the numerators. And the number below the division line is called the denominator. So next, try identifying the numerator and denominator for a few more fractions.
nicely done. So as we said, four-sixths is an example of a fraction. But if you take four and divide it by six on your calculator, you'll get an expression that looks like this. 0.6666666 and so on, where the sixes go on forever. This is the same thing as four-sixths. It's just written in decimal form. Some fractions like this go on forever, while others, like two-fifths, don't. Divide two by five on your calculator, and you'll see it's equal to 0 0.4. So try evaluating these two fractions to at least three decimal places. In other words, if the decimal answer keeps going and going, just include the first three digits after the decimal point. Here you'll explore how to multiply fractions. To get started, try out this multiplication problem, or click here to review. Exactly. This is like saying you have two groups of 10, meaning you have a total of 20. Now let's get back to fractions. Which of these fractions down here represents 1 half? Right. Over here, we've shaded 1 half of this dot. Now what happens if we multiply this fraction, 1 half, by a whole number, like 10? Well, one way to think about this is adding up 10 halves. So if we have 10 half dots, how many dots do we have in total? Exactly. 10 half dots means you have 5 whole dots. So 1 half times 10 equals 5. Now here's another way to think about it. Instead of having 10 of the half dots, we can have 1 half of 10 dots. So here's a group of 10 dots. Now for only counting this half of them, how many dots do we have? Right, half of 10 is 5. So when you're multiplying 1 half by 10, you can think of it as 10 halves or as 1 half of 10. Either way, you'll get 5, which is the correct answer. Try another example. What's 1 third times 12? So instead of adding up 12 thirds, try taking 1 third of this group of 12 dots. Excellent! Here's how we can divide the 12 dots into three equal groups. So 1 third times 12 equals 4. Next, what's 2 thirds times 12? So how many dots do you have if you've got two-thirds of this group? Nicely done. So we can divide this group into thirds again, and then look at two of those thirds. There are eight dots here, so two-thirds times 12 equals eight. Now what happens if we multiply one fraction by another fraction, like one-half times three-fifths? Well, you can think of this as starting with a group that represents three-fifths and then taking half of it. So here's a dot, and let's shade in three-fifths of it. One-half times three-fifths represents half of this green region. So let's divide this dot into a few more equal slices. Half of the green region would be these purple slices over here. So then what fraction equals one-half times three-fifths? and make sure to enter your answer as a single fraction. So for example, if you wanted to enter four sevenths, you'd write it as four slash seven. Right, one half times three fifths is represented by this purple region here. We have 10 equal slices and three of them are purple, so this fraction is three tenths. And that's it, one half times three fifths equals three tenths. Now instead of starting with three-fifths and taking half of it, you could also start with a half, like this slice over here, and then take three-fifths of it. So if we divide this half into five smaller slices and then take three of them, this purple region represents one-half times three-fifths. And again, we get an answer of three-tenths. So whether you're taking one-half of three-fifths or three-fifths of one-half, either way you'll get the right answer. Now there's a trick you can use to quickly multiply fractions. So if you're multiplying one-half times three-fifths, you can multiply the numerators, the numbers on top, giving you one times three, or three, and you can multiply the denominators, the numbers on the bottom, giving you two times five, or ten. 
and as you just found, three-tenths is the product of these two fractions. So to multiply fractions, you can multiply their numerators together, and then multiply their denominators together, and that will always give you the correct answer. Try using this trick to evaluate this product, three-fourths times five-sevenths, and again, enter your answer as a single fraction. Excellent! Multiplying 3 and 5 gives you 15, and multiplying 4 and 7 gives you 28. So 3 fourths times 5 sevenths equals 15 twenty-eighths. Let's double check that by drawing it out. Here's 3 fourths, and we'll divide each of these fourths into 7 smaller slices. So we want 5 sevenths of this green portion. First, we'll split it up into 7 regions of equal size, and then we'll keep 5 of them. So this purple region represents three-fourths times five-sevenths. If you count up all the slices here, there are twenty-eight, and sure enough, fifteen of them are purple. So this is indeed fifteen twenty-eighths. In general, you'll probably want to use this trick to multiply fractions, because splitting up slices like this is a lot of work. Okay, one more thing. Say you're multiplying a fraction by a whole number, like two-thirds times fifteen. 15 is the same as 15 divided by 1, so you can think of this as multiplying two fractions together. Multiplying the numerators gives you 2 times 15, or 30, and multiplying the denominators gives you 3 times 1, or 3. So this product is 30 divided by 3, which equals 10. And there you have it, 2 thirds times 15 equals 10. So for your final challenge, try evaluating these two products six-elevenths times two-fifths, and fourteen times two-sevenths. Here you'll discover ways to compare fractions, so you can quickly say whether two fractions are equal, or if not, which one is larger or smaller. But first, let's make sure you're all set on multiplying fractions. For example, what's three-sevenths times two-fifths? Be sure to enter your answer as a single fraction with a slash between the numerator and the denominator. Great, so three-sevenths times two-fifths equals six-thirty-fifths. Next, let's look at equivalent fractions. This green region here represents three-fourths. Which other fraction equals three-fourths? Is it two-thirds, four-fifths, or six-eighths? Nicely done, so three-fourths is equivalent to six-eighths. There are two ways to write the same number. Here's another way to see that. Let's start with three-fourths. If we multiply it by one, we still get three-fourths, because multiplying by one doesn't change a number. Now another way to write one is like this, two divided by two, or two halves. So if we plug in two halves for one in this equation, you can multiply these two fractions on the left to get six-eighths, and there you have it. Six-eighths and three-fourths are equal. Try using this trick of multiplying by fractions that are equal to one to find a few more fractions that equal three-fourths. So multiply three-fourths by three-thirds, five-fifths, and six-sixths, all of which are equal to one. Enter in the numerators and denominators you get over here. Excellent, here are the fractions you found. So three-fourths is equal to nine-twelfths, fifteen-twentieths, and eighteen-twenty-fourths. It turns out there are lots of fractions that equal three-fourths, and one of them has a twenty-one in the numerator. What's the denominator for this fraction that equals three-fourths? If you get stuck, just click down here. Excellent, yes, three-fourths equals twenty-one-twenty-eighths and you can see that by multiplying three-fourths by seven-sevenths, a fraction that equals one. Next, we'll explore a quick way to check whether two fractions are equal. So here's another example of two equal fractions, two-thirds and eight-twelfths, and you can check that they're equal by multiplying two-thirds by four-fourths, and you'll get eight-twelfths. So we'll do what's called cross-multiplication. That's when you multiply the numerator of one fraction by the denominator of the other. So if we multiply this numerator, 
2 by this denominator, 12, we get 24. And if we multiply this numerator, 8, by this denominator, 3, we again get 24. And these two numbers are equal. Any time you get the same number when you cross multiply fractions, that means the fractions are equal. Pretty neat, right? Try this out on a few pairs of fractions. Of the four pairs here, which are pairs of equal fractions? And feel free to ask for a hint if you need some help getting started. Nicely done. So multiplying the left numerators by the right denominators gives you these numbers, while multiplying the right numerators by the left denominators gives you these numbers. The numbers are equal for these two pairs of fractions. So that means that 1 fourth equals 9 thirty-sixths and 6 twenty-firsts equals 2 sevenths. Next, let's take a closer look at these two fractions, 8 twelfths and 3 fourths you found that they are not equivalent. But it turns out that cross multiplication also tells you which fraction is bigger. 36 is greater than 32, and that means that 3 fourths is greater than 8 twelfths. So in general, when you're cross multiplying fractions, the numerator with the bigger product, so that's this numerator here, because it had the bigger product of 36, that's the numerator for the bigger fraction. So again, 3 fourths is greater than 8 twelfths because 3 times 12, or 36, is greater than 8 times 4, or 32. Try using this method to compare a few more fractions. Here are three pairs of fractions. Go ahead and select the bigger of these two fractions, the bigger of these two fractions, and the bigger of these two fractions. Excellent work. Let's quickly see how you got that. For these two fractions, the products are 25 and 27. 27 is greater than 25, and the numerator that gave us a product of 27 comes from this fraction. So 3 fifths is greater than 5 ninths. Over here, cross multiplying gave you products of 25 and 24. 25 is bigger, so 5 sixths is greater than 4 fifths. And finally, here we have products of 6 and 7. 7 is bigger, so 1 half is greater than 3 sevenths. Cross multiplying to compare fractions can save you a lot of work. For example, another way to compare 5 ninths and 3 fifths is to sketch them out as slices. This green region represents 5 ninths, while this represents 3 fifths. If you look closely, you can see that 3 fifths is indeed greater than 5 ninths, but cross multiplying will get you the answer a lot faster. So just to recap, when you cross multiply fractions, if the products are equal, then the fractions are equal. And if the products are different, then the numerator with the bigger product tells you which is the bigger fraction. And a final word of caution, this second rule applies to positive fractions. If you're ever comparing fractions with negative numerators or denominators, then this rule might not always work, so be very careful.